Hello and welcome to Brain Bites. This is a series where we learn about the new and exciting research coming out of the Center for Brain Health here at the University of British Columbia. We're going to dive deep into new findings and then talk to the scientists that are behind the research. Sounds look good. Hormones govern our lives. From the way we feel to the way we develop, hormones are there every step of the way. Some of the most powerful hormones are the sex hormones, and the two most well-known are testosterone and estrogen. Now, the sex hormones are created in abundance in the testes and ovaries, but it wasn't until recently the scientists discovered that sex hormones are also created in the brains of animals. Daniel Tobiansky is a neuroscientist here at the Center for Brain Health, and his work focuses on testosterone. He wanted to know how is this brain testosterone created? And why is brain testosterone created? And interestingly, he wanted to know, well, what happens if we castrate an animal? Does the amount of testosterone created in the brain increase? And the answers here could have very interesting implications on cancer patients and on aging males. I'm here with Dr. Daniel Tobiansky. Thank you for coming today. Thank you very much for having me. So what exactly was your research? So what we did is we neutered male rats to get rid of testosterone in their circulation um, and then we looked at their brain to see if they still had testosterone um, if they were able to produce testosterone in brain regions that were important or are important for motivation and reward seeking and then we also wanted to know if these brain regions had the enzymes that make testosterone suggesting that this motivational system can make its own testosterone. This study is a cool backstory. Several scientists noticed that male song sparrows were acting aggressive all throughout the year, not just during the mating season, where aggression is normally seen. Testosterone has many effects on the body, and one of them is to increase aggression. And we also know that during the mating season, testosterone production increases. Now here's where things get really cool. When it's not the mating season, the testy size of song sparrows actually decreases. They shrink in size. Not only that, but testosterone production also grinds to a halt. So the scientist wondered, if we see aggression all year long and testosterone production in the body is at zero, what else is producing testosterone? And what did you find? What are the results? So what we found is um, that after two weeks and after a month and a half, so six weeks, that in about half of the animals, you can still detect normal levels, uh, relatively normal levels of testosterone in these brain regions when it's totally non-detectable in the blood. You get rid of the source, which are the testes, but it looks like the brain is still producing the testosterone that it needs um, up to six weeks later. So in the animals that were castrated, did they have a higher concentration of testosterone in their brain? No, they actually had about the same level of testosterone as those animals that remained in paths. Um, but one would expect that if you remove the testes, remove the source of testosterone, then you wouldn't see any testosterone in the brain at all. If 100% of the testosterone came from the testes, then there should be none in the brain. And six weeks later, we found that indeed they had normal or near normal levels of testosterone. All right, so we're in the lab and what are we looking at in here? So what we have here is the machine that we use to separate out the steroids from our brain samples um, and then ultimately to measure them. So how do we do that? What we do is we open this up, we take the tray out. So in each one of these vials, we have steroid extracted from one brain sample. We load this tray here um, with the brain samples and then it gets injected into the system, comes over here, and then there's this column that will separate out testosterone from other steroids and then that gets injected into the mass spectrometer. And what exactly is a mass spectrometer? So it allows us to measure the concentration of steroids in the brain. And is it like really sensitive or? Oh it's extremely sensitive. So say you were to dissolve a cube of sugar into 5,000 Olympic-sized pools. We could still detect, in one milliliter of water, sugar. So that's how you were able to detect steroids or testosterone in those brain samples of rats? Correct. 
So this was definitely then useful for your study. Oh yeah, it was indispensable. So is the brain always producing testosterone or is that only when an animal's castrated? So that's a really interesting question. And we don't know the answer to that question yet. We don't know how often, how fast the brain is producing testosterone. This was a really kind of first pass at looking at how the brain might produce testosterone. And um, this will inform future studies, but there's still a lot to be done. One of the major findings of the study was that the scientists discovered enzymes that create testosterone in regions of the brain that normally deal with reward and motivation. Enzymes can be thought of as like biological machines that help speed up chemical reactions. The scientists discovered these testosterone creating enzymes in the same areas of the brain that create dopamine. And that's the chemical that's released when we do something that we like. What relevance does finding these enzymes mean for, say, someone with prostate cancer or another kind of disease? Someone with prostate cancer, uh, kind of the first line of action oftentimes is, is castration to get rid of testosterone because the prostate cancer is oftentimes reliant on testosterone for growth. But a problem arises in some advanced prostate cancers. Even though we have halted the body's production of testosterone, the cancer begins to make its own testosterone and will continue to grow on its own. So how do we fight this? The best drugs on the market inhibit the enzymes that help create testosterone. They shut down the very same enzymes that were identified in the study. This halts all testosterone production in the cancer in an effort to make it more manageable. But this drug gets sent all over the body and will even enter the brain, which means that testosterone production in the brain will also be affected. And this can potentially cause cognitive problems in people going through this treatment. This study discovered that testosterone is being produced in regions of the brain that deal with motivation and reward. And since testosterone production in this area is being shut down, this can help explain why the motivation of people on these enzyme-blocking drugs may be affected. It's like that. So it just kind of gives us a scientific underpinning of what's going on in their brain. So what relevance do these enzymes have to, say, maybe not someone with prostate cancer, but maybe just an aging male that kind of wants to go on testosterone replacement therapy? So an issue with testosterone replacement therapy is that testosterone can be really deleterious um, if you use it, you know, if it's present throughout the body, right? It increases growth of your prostate, which is usually a problem in aging males. Um, and it can have these off-target effects, right? And if you're using it to increase your motivation, to better your mood, or to increase muscle growth, um, it can have these unwanted side effects. Uh, so if we can find a way to specifically target these enzymes, say within this motivational system in the brain, um, then we could have the beneficial influence of testosterone, increased testosterone, while avoiding kind of those detrimental aspects of the TRT that we have today, the testosterone replacement therapy. Thank you, Dr. Tobiansky, for coming by today. This learned a lot about testosterone and where it's produced. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. If you want to read more of Dr. Tobiansky's work, you can check out the description below. Thank you very much. Thank you.